أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله that we talked about the binary code the concept of on and off and when we begin to make our tafakkur about binary code plus and minus on and off it's simple enough for our children to understand. Do you understand on and off? You understand when somebody's on and when somebody's practicing to be a dot. The way to Allah is one is on. And if I'm on and Allah's on, I'm not magnetized, I'm not levitating. Or what's the magnetic pool called? Centrifuge. The ma- when a magnet pulls, the attraction is not happening. Just this law of energy. Allah's the one, I have to be a nuqt. If Allah's the one, the positive, then I have to admit, La ilaha anta subhanika inni kuntum min dalimin I am, glory be to you, Ya Rabbi, you're the one. And verily I am an oppressor to myself. Means then this we'll see this example in everything that's happening. Alhamdulillah last night they asked about Pharaoh and Pharaonic issues and alhamdulillah came the issue and tariqah it's dalil of tariqah and the dalil of the way is Surat Al-Kahf is the cave. This is the cave of the Divinely Presence in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And Surat Al-Kaf is all the qasa and stories of this reality of binary code. And that Allah is giving for us so many examples of Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr And then gives the, the law from Surat Al-Kaf of this relationship. Because they think, oh the shaykhs make these things up, what you should say, what you should not say. No, 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 100% Qur'an, 100%, 110% holy hadith. Surat Al-Kahf is all the laws of the mannerisms of this binary relationship. The Nabi Musa salam is a big one representing Allah the shadow of that reality, authorized to be on. But he asked of a higher reality, Ya Rabbi you granted me this position and this blessing, I want to see you, I want to see my Lord. The, the verbiage is very important in the verses, Sayyidina Musa asked to see his Rabb. That is a different talk but that's why the Nath said, ask Sayyidina Musa what he saw. This is now the binary code. Allah say, you can't see me, you can't see that reality, I'm going to send my glory upon the mountain. Means I'm going to send an energy that going to now annihilate your oneness to take you again to a state of nukht. Only at that nukht you'll realize what you're asking from me. And the energy came, hit the one and made it to be dust, qashi, it was like a powder which is the significance of one nukht, nothing. And as a result in that state the nat is asking and only Allah inspiring, what Sayyidina Musa saw in his negated state? Nothing, he went into a, his binary state of nothingness. At that time Allah he showed the reality that he was seeking from his Lord and he saw the light of Sayyidina Muhammad which was a frequency far greater than his understanding and as a result of that energy hitting it had to annihilate him down so that the appearance of Prophet in his ruhaniyat could be seen. As a result of witnessing and what Sayyidina Musa witnessed 
And the awwal al-Muslimin witnessing that light realize, that's it, I'm taking a path of negation. Every Prophet of Allah of these great Prophets, they have a story of leaving the oneness, leaving what Allah dressed them of an imitated one and giving for us an example, you must also negate yourself continuously. And every time we negate ourself, Allah takes us deeper into the reality. So then the highest reality is for them to witness the Muhammadan haqqaiq. So Sayyidina Musa said, that's it, came back said, I, I will not stop until I reach where two rivers meet, La ilaha illallah at the end of Allah to Meem Muhammad Rasulullah. I want to go all the way to where that who and I won't stop until I reach that reality. He witnessed the oceans of negation that if I negate myself Allah will take me to the presence of His real reflection because nobody can get to the reflection of Allah that's Prophet that's what binary code it's uh, uh, Allah's one, Prophet is nukht. Next thing comes Prophet one and all the Prophets are nukht. They don't witness Allah. He knew who's talking and he said, I want to see my Lord, you'll see your Lord. And as a result he had to negate himself, he can't come as a one into the presence of Prophet there can't be two people on. One has to be off to witness the one. And this system of negation is you negate yourself, lower yourself, be nothing and Allah show you everything, Layl and Qadr. Layl to be nothing and Qadr is an energy that begin to dress you. And Sayyidina Musa asked to enter into this ocean of negation. Because here is where Allah then gives the difficulty of that process. So he witnessed what he witnessed and now took the journey of negation at this level to reach the reflection of Prophet And he came again, he came to one of our students, Sayyidina Khidr, one of our students representing this ocean of oneness because there's role playing, he's going to represent the Muhammadan light. He's sent there to take the Prophet of Allah into an ocean of negation to be nothing. You're going to practice with me nothing so that you can again witness the Muhammadan haqqaiq. But I warn you, you're not going to have patience with me. For what little you know is going to be a continuous difficulty and abrasion for our relationship. He says, no inshaAllah you find me to be patient, sabirin. So it means this path requires patience and if whatever you think you know throw it away, it's not going to help you at all. It actually will begin to interfere with your ability to submit. Little knowledge. What Mawlana Namani would say? Very dangerous, very dangerous. Very difficult because the knowledge keep coming up, no, not going to submit, no, not going to submit. But this formula is laid out in Surat Al-Kahf by Allah and Sayyidina Musa said, no you find me to be patient. And as Sayyidina Musa is taking a position of negation and how difficult it is because Sayyidina Khidr is a Prophet that can't be seen. So he's listening, he witnessing, seeing a Prophet that can't be seen and people watching some of the things he was doing that were very ajeeb. And the fear of social stigma that people are watching me and you're asking me to break this boat but what the people are going to say that I'm doing these things? More worried about what people are going to say. And then again same issue that you're not supposed to ask questions. Just follow me what we're going to do. 
So again this conflict of being able to submit. And then the second issue they came across a boy and the bad character of the boy and what Allah was going to do with the person of bad character. And again Sayyidina Musa intervened and began to debate. And then by the wall, why are we not charging for the wall? Why? Again the whole debating because continuous state of being on was finding difficult to be off. So Allah is giving from the great prophets of Allah Do you, you think this path is easy? That you think this path is something that you can easily turn off and it comes very easy, oh that's very easy for me to do. And Allah is showing, no Sayyidina Musa had a very difficult time with this. And in the end awliyaullah coming and teaching the difficulty that was being faced to be nothing and to listen to this one that you wanted to achieve this reality and we sent you to one of our servants and the difficulty that you're having in submitting and just being a nukht. And in the end Sayyidina Khidr described his whole life, the whole life of Sayyidina Musa that you were thrown in a boat and that you had hit a man and killed him because he was, why are you killing the boy? He said, well didn't you push a man when you were fighting with Pharaoh's people? And then why, why did you make this wall and we didn't charge money for it? He said, then why did you give water to Shu'aib's daughters? Because the whole time the one was trying to analyze the other one. He wasn't coming to submit. He was coming to see, what do you have that's so special? I'm not really coming to be a nukht, I'm actually coming to figure out what you're doing and what makes you special. But that's not the way to approach Allah That you're, you're coming to test somebody? That's why He told them, no this whole life was not my life that you're coming to analyze, it actually was your life. You had the, the ship, your mom threw you in a basket. You're the one who pushed a guard and killed him, then you're the one who gave water and didn't ask and was trying to teach and give the example that you're not here to analyze me, you asked Allah you want to be a nukht. Now imagine then in our daily life how everyone comes to the shaykhs and comes to tariqah to analyze the shaykh and they're not here to be a nukht, they're here to see that what make you to be a one. And at the end Sayyidina Khidr had to depart because he's a big Prophet of Allah and you can't have a conflict. He's at the end says, With the, between me and you this is my time to go, that it's not going to work like this. You're not here to test me, you ask to be a nukht. Everyone pray to Allah Ya Rabbi I want to reach you, I want to be nothing. All those prayers if they were accepted you should find yourself in the tariqahs. And if those who didn't pray for it and they found themselves in the tariqahs, well alhamdulillah that's okay too, right? They didn't ask for this, so I didn't ask for that shaykh but Allah granted that to you. There's a, there are murids whom they're seeking to be nothing, Allah dressed them. And there are murad whom they didn't ask but Allah's calling them, you've been called, you know like a, a, like a jury duty. You've been called into action and you, you have to go. Your whole life will push you into that reality. But Surat Al-Kahf is giving us this understanding that in this way Sayyidina Khidr kept asking Sayyidina Musa that you can't ask. When testing comes you can't ask, why is this happening? Because if you're trying to make logical sense through your mind means, don't ask a question until I give permission to, to speak. That's not submission. Submission is through your heart, you came to be a nukht and you submit. When there's no submission it's explained to me, my rational mind is not making sense but that's not submission, that's just a conversation. That is an understanding for us the difficulty of taslim. The difficulty of the religion of Islam, the difficulty of truly submitting. It's not something easy, 
that everybody thinks they got it in five minutes and the next five minutes they say, yeah of course we have iman, we did this and this and this. It's merely the entry and what Allah wanted for us of perfection and good character was taslim and submission, look to the difficulty that Sayyidina Musa was, was facing and how difficult it is to submit. And when we realize how difficult submission is, what then unopens its understanding of why we have testing, why we have mushkilat, why we have difficulty in life. Because submission is not easy and being a one in life and being someone is not easy. And Allah when He loves the servant He says, you still have to be a nukht and when you're being a one, one, one and you're just not going into your state of being a nukht then the ocean of difficulty is just waiting there. And Allah takes this insan, dips them into the ocean of difficulty and as a result the difficulties will make them a nukht. If you don't make it with your spiritual practices, you don't make it to put a discipline upon yourself. There's no force, no, there's no shaykh that can force anyone anything nor are they interested at all. They merely teach and they say, here's your zikr, here's your awrat, make your connection, here are all these tools that Allah is opening, taslim. If you don't taslim, every mushkilat opens in our lives. Everything, children that will never listen to you, uh, spouses that will never listen to you, money that never comes to you, every sickness seems to be around you. Why? Because I'm a cursed? No, you're not cursed. Allah want you to be nukht. And we said, somebody with aqal realizes, Allah wants me to be a nukht, Ya Rabbi, don't need to beat me. Khalas, I'm in sujood. Why would somebody want the stick when it's so easy to submit yourself? And that was our lives, that you witness it, you witness the oceans of difficulty. You know that what Allah wants from you from a reality, submit, it's so much nicer. Give, submit. Pray, stay quiet. When agitation comes, oh you're being tested now, you want the stick? Say, no, 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 stay quiet. You don't stay quiet then Allah sends the stick. Means Allah's difficulty moves towards that person. And the great equalizer for those who don't believe all of that is the grave. Where Allah said, that's why I made graves. Otherwise why, why all of us couldn't have been born and then a beautiful spaceship comes at the last day and takes us to heavens. Say, here you go, your time is finished here, no John please board our ship and the angels will be taking you to paradise, inshaAllah. Why it doesn't happen that way? But Allah says, dig a hole for him, he's about to go in. It's a completely different experience. <laughs> Very humbling. Dig a hole? I have to go in there? Yeah, get in there. And pray that you're, you were true in what you were saying and that your character was correct, otherwise the earth will dissolve you. The creatures will come into there and begin to eat you. And those whom Allah found pleasure and ridha in their character, they put them in the grave, they opened the grave because of movement and things they had to move and many, 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 many examples of pious souls whom Allah found satisfaction in them or were wrongly killed or, or died. They opened the grave to move and recently they posted a picture there was a young girl of 10 to 11 was fresh, fresh and had like a smile on her face, skin not touched. Means the dirt had no permission to touch that skin and to begin to dissolve it. Allah said, this one is already innocent and nothing. If they're nothing, there's no need to come to, to bring their oneness down. So it means all of these realities 
are real for us. Either we take the path in which to be, nukht, nothing, I'm off. And as a result of being off, Allah says, it's not so hard, I'm going to just see with so many beautific lights. Every time you feel wronged, go on your prayer carpet, make wudu, go onto the prayer carpet and begin to cry, Wa fa'ud amri in Allah in Allahu basirun bil ibad, Ya Rabbi help me that you're the only one who can grant me a najat and salvation. And we seek our compensation and, and everything from Allah and you find yourself becoming spiritually more powerful, spiritually more dressed and you feel the nearness to that Divinely Presence. And every time you take your hisab in your own hand you feel ashamed and you feel distant from Allah At least you should be feeling that because you feel that, I could have done this better. And we pray that Allah grant us more and more understanding that when these subjects come they're a lifelong contemplation, that everything is on and off, everything is binary code. I don't have to study all these complicated religious texts, I have to know every night I make an account, was I closer to nothing or closer to pretending to be a one? If I was nothing it's like a tug of war, you make a line and every night you think, what did I do today that I want to keep an accounting for myself? It was more of being a one, oh I talk back like this <laughs> and I argue with this person, a uh, one and I did this one. Or was it more towards nukht, nukht, nukht that they argued with me, I stayed quiet. They accused me of something like this, I stayed quiet. And every night if we take that accounting and after a week we see that were we more towards the negative to the dot to the nothing or we were more towards positive and one and one and one and I argued about everything, I debated everything, I was angry about everything, then you have to realize you're drawing away from Allah You're pushing yourself away, not the shaykh, not any human being, this is not… this is a shaykh just teaching their haqqaiqs that if the more, more on, more on, more on, more times you're vindicating your nafs, your ego and listening to shaitan you're actually repelling from Allah And that's why we call it magnetism. When you're attracting means that you reverse your character and you'll be attracting towards Allah's positivity, make yourself, admit to yourself nothing. You will be attracted to Divine the Presence. Every time you make yourself that, no I'm something, you just move to farther away. I'm, I'm something very big, I'm farther away. And that's our whole muhasaba. You don't have to know the, the 800 sins and say, I have to memorize the 800 sins. Very simple, just you went positive or you went to the nukht. If you went to the nukht, you drew closer to Allah We pray that Allah inspires all to be a nukht and that He dress us from that blessing, dress us from that light and that Prophet grant an inspiration, a madad and a nazar to make that possible. That in this world that everything is going to be positive and, and egoistic and bad character, that the nazar and fayas and the madad of Prophet dress us and bless us by means of all of these things that we're taught, all this love and all these actions of love, that that nazar and that fires dress us to always choose the nukht. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. <laughs>